prostitute, a person typically a woman who engages in sexual activity for payment. Hosea 3.3 3. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, and thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for an another man, so I will also be for thee. Hey everybody, welcome back once again. It's your girl Jasmine. So, um, we're going to kind of talk about how when God talks to us, he gives us clear direction, you know. Um, there will be times and moments in your life, you know, where you'll be wondering, you know, am I really hearing God correctly? And, you know, God is a God who's going to make things clear. That's why you have things like confirmation, checking to see, you know, like, God, did you really say that? Can you confirm this? Um, is it okay for me to step out on faith? You know, like, for instance, uh, Peter, when he walks on water, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. He didn't say, yeah, it's me. I No, he said, come. Come. It was clear as day. Come. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse 33. It says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the saints. So um, what we'll know is God is not an author of confusion. Um, he's not an author of confusion. When he gives you instructions or directions, they will be clear. Um, they will speak loudly, meaning like, you know, like a GPS. Turn left here means to turn left here. Take a step of faith means to take a step of faith. Like I said earlier, when he told Peter to walk on the water, uh, I believe it's Matthew 14, um, he said, Peter, he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And he said, come. And so the directions of the orders were clear to come here, take the step of faith, move forward, move in this direction. It's okay to go this way. I'm with you. I got you. Just keep your eye on me and come into the direction which it is that, you know, uh, I'm calling you to. Um, and so, you know, it's like when God first originally told me to move to Florida, you know, uh, there were tons of signs. Like, for instance, everyone around me was always talking about Florida. Or whenever I'd go out, there'd always be Florida license plates everywhere, everywhere. And they'd always be ahead of me. You know, they'd be in the car in front of me. So it's like Florida is ahead of you. You know, keep focusing on that. Keep knowing that this is the direction that I'm taking you. Um the direction was clear, there was no confusion, he wasn't saying, uh, you know, okay, um, I want you to go here, but in actually I want you to go to here, it wasn't, you know how some people, they'll tell you one direction one day, and then the next day they'll change up the direction the next day, and, and then the next day, you know, you're wondering, okay, well, you know, you keep switching up the directions, you know, which way am I really going? No, God is not an author of confusion. When he tells you he's going to bring you somewhere, when he tells you he's going to do something in your life, it's clear as day. You can't miss it. Um, you know, you know what you are going to do, what is going to happen in your life. And I can, you know, I can, um, I can, if you look in Acts, We'll look in Acts number nine at um at uh what's his name? Saul. When um if I can turn to Acts. When you think about the Bible in Acts chapter nine, um when God approached Ananias on the um and told him that he was gonna meet Saul, you know? Uh, his directions were clear as day. There was no confusion um, at all. He knew who he was talking to. He knew that it was the Lord. He knew the instructions in which it is that God was uh, calling him to. And we'll, we'll look at that. Alrighty. <clears throat> um, it says right here in Acts 9, verse 10. In Damascus... There was also a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias. So here it was. The Lord had called Ananias and called him in a vision. And it was clear as day. He knew it was the Lord. 
and he called him by his name, Ananias. Everything was clear as day, okay? You you can picture it, picture it in your head. Here it was, Ananias is getting called by God in the vision. And he said, yes, Lord. He didn't say, uh, who are you trying to speak to me? He knew it was the Lord. He answered, and the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on a street, on straight street, and ask for a man from Tarshish. So here the instructions are clear as day as again. The Lord told him to go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man. Now there's no confusion in that. He knew what street he was going to. He knew what he was going to ask. The man, he knew what, where the man was from. He knew the man was named Tarshish. And he knew, it says, it continues on, named Saul. For he is praying. So he knew that he was looking for Saul from Tarshish. On a street called Straight. In the house of Judah. Okay? For he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come. So God also gave him the vision as well. The vision was clear day for Ananias and it was clear as day for Saul. Um, and it says, come and place his hand. Oh, in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on his, on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priests to arrest all whom call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, clear as day, go. No confusion, uh, I don't think it's safe to go. No, go. That was it. You know, his instruction was clear as day. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And it says, And then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. And he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. So what we're seeing is there was no misunderstanding in the directions that were that God was telling Ananias. He said, go to a street go to street straight look for Saul of Tarshish uh he will be there he is blind uh when Ananias questioned him God said look go you know no hesitation go he's waiting for you you know to uh touch him so that he could receive his sight and that's exactly what he did he went there he touched him and as soon as that happened the scales fell out of his eyes and he received his sight there was no misunderstanding in the directions. The directions were clear as day. God is not an author of confusion. When he says something to you that applies to your life, that he wants you to do for your life, it is clear as day. There is no misconstruing it. He's not going to confuse you. Well, I think that God said this to me. No, God, if God is really speaking to you in your life, if God is really telling you to do something for your life, if God says something is going to happen in your life, if God says, I need to go here in your life, then that is where it is that you're going. There is no confusion. Well, I think that God said no. Point blank period. If God said it to you, then God said it to you, and there is no question or doubt about it because he's not he's not an author of confusion. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, I remember when I stepped out on faith and left college to follow, you know, God. You know, they were like, oh, well, maybe you're hearing the devil. I got that a lot. Trust me. I can't even, not even explain or express to you how much I got, you're hearing the devil, you're hearing the devil. And from even people in the church, 
from pastors, from relatives, you're hearing the devil, friends, you're hearing the devil. And I would go back to God's word and I'd, you know, ask him over and over, am I, am I hearing you? He'd confirm it over and over and over and over again, you know, and, you know, I didn't want to be in, you know, in some type of confusion, like, did I hear God wrong? Is he really speaking to me? I would go back to him and confirm, you know, kind of like Ananias did, okay, well, I heard that Saul Tarsus has come here, or what, a, you know, to kill uh, all these people, and God said, you know, Ananias, go, you know, the, the it was clear as day, go, you know, there was no questions, doubt about it, go, you know, uh, he wasn't hearing from the devil, oh, go see Saul, and then Saul was going to kill him, no, it was God telling him in clear as day, with no confusion, look, I need you to go to a street called straight, there will be Saul, and he is going to be living for me now, he is going to be uh, you know, doing my will, and he's just waiting for you to touch him so he can receive uh, a new vision, a new, uh, for his life and where it is that he's heading, in, in the new direction in which it is that he's heading. So I'm going to put up the first few questions, and then we're going to carry on. All right, you guys? Peace. Do you believe that you are hearing God correctly? Have you asked God to confirm what he has told you? What is God asking you to do? All right, so we're going to kind of look at um, this again. Uh, so directions. Directions are uh, a course along which someone or something moves. Um, and so we're going to kind of look at uh, Genesis 24 in the Bible. It says uh, we're kind of looking at where God tells, uh, I mean, sorry, Abraham tells the servant to go find a son for um, for a, a wife for his son Isaac. Excuse me, I always get this wrong. So Abraham goes and tells the servant to go find a wife for his son Isaac. And so um, he goes out and he prays about it um, at a well. And all of a sudden this woman uh, named Rebecca comes up and he answers he does everything that in which he just prayed for, for a woman for Isaac. He watered the camels and, um, you know, he, uh, she asked, she watered the camels, gave the camels water. She gave the servants something to drink. She was kind to him. She was the answer to his prayer and that's exactly what he had asked for. And so, um, I, so the servant wants to bring Rebecca back to be Isaac's wife because he knows that the Lord has pros prospered the way for him and that this is his wife. And so Genesis 24, um, it shows that uh, in verse 51, we're going to see that Rebecca's steps were directed by God. So when we think about the word directions, it's a course along which someone or something moves so we'll see that this is what God had directed uh, Rebecca to do it says in verse 51 here is Rebecca take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son as the Lord has directed so these were the instructions take her and go so here is Rebecca take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son as the Lord has directed uh, so the Lord had directed this the directions help you to figure out you know where you're going in life you know no one likes to go through life without having some type of direction uh, people like to know where they're headed uh, even in faith, you know, you you want to know, you know, okay, I'm going to step out on faith. Where am I heading? You know, even to the point where I stepped out on faith with God and God had me go to California. 
but still i still had some type of direction because the lord had directed me towards california even though i didn't know what was going to happen on the other side i still knew that i had a direction i still knew that i had to go take that step of faith and not until i got to california did god give me the next step of directions so he may direct you one way and you may only have partial directions but you'll still have a direction in which it is you're going and then when you get to your next destination he'll give you the next direction in which it is that you need to go to because once I got to California then he directed me to Tennessee and then once I got to Tennessee he directed me to Florida and so he gave me the directions in which it was that I needed to go even though that they were one step at a time sometimes God's not going to give you the full-on clear you know the full-on direction but the direction will still be clear to you know this is the first step but you know sometimes you know we get a little stressed out if we get the whole full direction now for um for Rebecca's case, you know, it says, here is Rebecca. Take her and go and let her become the wife of the master's son as the Lord has directed. So Rebecca knew where she was headed. Rebecca knew that uh, she would leave. She would go back to Isaac where Isaac lived uh, in Canaan. She knew that she would become his wife. Uh, and she knew that God had directed her path. Uh, there was no confusion in that. She she knew all these things. There was no miscommunication. It was clear as day. It's not like she was going to go back with the servant, go to Canaan, and she didn't know what she was going to be in Canaan for. Uh, when, you know, she knew clear as day when she agreed to go, you know, when they, they laid her down in the road, when they asked her, will you go with this man? she wouldn't be sitting there like uh well uh i don't know why i'm going with this man because the there was no miscommunication it was okay you're gonna go back to canaan you're gonna become isaac's wife are you willing to accept that this is what god wants for your life you know god has directed this god wants you to be isaac's wife god uh has this for your life are you willing to do this and she was willing to do it because, you know, the, obviously God had directed the steps for her, you know. But, you know, it's like you can't force anybody to go into a direction that they don't want to go. You know, that's why they had asked her, are you willing to go? And she said, I will go. She was willing to, you know, follow these directions and, and make these steps, you know. And, and when we have directions, you know, um... We have to make sure that we follow the directions in which it is um, that we do. So I'm going to put up the next few questions and we're going to kind of talk about how we must do as we are directed to do. Um, if we do have directions or else, you know, we it's hard to get to a destination if you're not following the directions. All right, you guys. Peace. Has God allowed the doors to open so that you can get to your next destination in which he has been leading you? What doors have opened to show you that this is God? All right, so we're going to kind of talk about, you know, if God gives you directions, then obviously you must do as directed. You know, you can't think you're going to get to a destination if you're not going to follow the directions in which it is that are given to you. You must follow the directions which are given to you. Um, and so we're going to turn to Deuteronomy, uh, chapter two, since my Bible wanted to close up on me. Alrighty, here we go. We're going to look in Deuteronomy two, um, verses one, um, and we're going to continue on down. So it says, so basically we're seeing that you know this is kind of like uh god had brought the children of israel out of egypt and um you know god had been you know speaking to moses and you know of course he's being led by god and so he has to listen to the directions of what it is that god gave him you know um to be able to get to the places where he needs to be it's like 
a few months ago, um, before I moved into this place, I had another place, which I had a roommate. But in the middle of my six-month lease, God told me that he was going to make a way. He's going to open the door for me to move out, you know, without my, you know, without getting any consequences with my lease. I had to follow him, and I had to move out right away, you know. Um, there's no point of me, you know, hearing God say these things if I wasn't going to listen to him. Um, there was no point in it, you know. Uh, so that's what I did. I listened and I ended up moving to where I live now. Uh, it's just like when I moved down here, you know, here I was, God told me, you know, uh, almost is never enough. Do it now. Do what you have to do so you can move to Florida. And, you know, I was going to, I wasn't going to fill out all the paperwork to get the apartment in which it was, you know, I was going to wait for the next day. And then the next day, here it was, I was uh, getting paperwork sent to me to sign my first lease for when I moved down here. So, you know, when God gives us instructions, we are to do uh, those instructions. We're not supposed to just sit there, you know, what's good is his instructions if you're, all you're going to do is look at them and you're not going to follow them, you know. Um, it's not going to uh, be beneficial to you at all, you know. Um, What's the whole point of following God or following Jesus if you don't listen to uh, what he's asking you to do? Um, so Deuteronomy 2. Then we turned back and set out towards the desert along the route of the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. So God's directing him. For a long time we made our way around the hill country of Seir. Then the Lord said to me, you have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north, okay? So here they were, and they had gone around uh, this hill country place long enough, and God's like, okay, well, you know, it's kind of like going down a road, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, it's your, it's your time to turn, you know? Uh, so you must take the turn because you're going into a new direction. So it says now turn north. So they had to turn north. That those were the directions in which it was that they were turning to. Um, you know, if you don't make those turns, you'll never get to the right direction. Like here, remember Saul, uh, remember Ananias, go to a street call straight. Uh, what if he would have went down a street called Crooked or a street called Curvy or a street called, you know, like, it, it, he needed to go down a street called Straight. That was his turn. He knew that he needed to go down that way. So it says, now turn north. Give the people these orders. You are about to pass through the territory of your brother, brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. They will be afraid of you, but be very careful. So that's another direction. Be very careful. Uh, they were going to take new turns in life. So they, you know, they had a turn, but they had to be very careful because they were going into new territory. It says, do not provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land, not even enough to put your foot on. So they were getting the instruction not to provoke them because God wasn't going to give them their land uh, to, you know, not even enough to put your foot on. And I mean, I wear a size, a size 10. And so uh, I, that's not even enough. To, <laughs> you can't even live on, on a piece of land as big as my foot. And I have a big foot, you know, um, but it's still not even enough to do anything. Um, so he says, I have given Esau the hill country of Seir as his own. And you are to pay them in silver. So here's another direction. You are to pay them in silver for the food you will eat and the water you will drink. So, you know, each direction was very critical in which they had to follow and which they had to do. And they were clear as day. Don't provoke them to war, pay them with silver, turn north, 
you know, they there was no miscommunication. God spoke it clear so that they could get it right and so that they could do the things in which it was that they needed to do because God had places for them to go in their life, you know. Uh, God wants you to get to your destination just like uh, you want to get to your destination. Um, you know, he doesn't want to prolong you you from getting to your destination he doesn't want to drag it out uh you know he wants you to get there safely and for you to do or be wherever it is that he's called you to be um it's not that he doesn't want you to be there because he does why would he give you directions to bring you to a place in your life in which he wants you to be and you know want you want to prolong the the destination so he's going to give you directions clear as day you know turn north uh be careful be afraid don't provoke these people pay in silver because he wants you to have all the right directions so that you can be in that place you know look i have no consequences on breaking my lease six months in i have my own place it's in a nicer community, uh, you know, there's gates here, it's very quiet, um, and I remember, you know, even with, with when it came to my jobs, you know, like, uh, the job I have in my morning job, like, I remember I was like, oh, I don't want to work here, and God's like, you know, just trust me, and so now I work there, and it fits perfectly in with my second job, I, you know, I work a normal, I probably work 44 hours a week, so I work a normal 44 hours a week, my jobs are very mellow. They're not stressing me out. I don't, I'm not sick, you know, I'm not stressed, like, you know, and, and it supplies my needs. So, you know, God knows what you need when he gives you directions, when he gives you orders, when he puts you in certain places in your life. You know, you just need to listen to what he's trying to tell you because he knows what's best for you. He knows what it is in your life and how to get you to the places which you need to be personally for your life in you know the safest manner you know and he's just trying to get you there safely and soundly you know he's not trying to cause any harm or damage to you trying to bring you to the place in which it is that he wants to bring you in your life now just like in verse 9 we'll see again then the lord said unto me do not harass the moabites or provoke them to war for i will not give you any part of their land i have given her to the descendants of law as a possession um, we'll see again, you know, um, in verse 13, and the Lord said, now get up and cross Zeard Valley. So we crossed the valley. So, uh, they did as directed, you know, God said, now get up and cross the valley. And so what did they do? They crossed the valley. Um, so whenever God has a direction for you, you know, uh, you do it, you know, uh, in order to get to the place. Where it is that God's showing you, there's no way you can get it, get to it without following the direction he's giving you uh, in the way, in the order in which it is that he's going to give it to you. We think about in um, uh, Joshua and when they had went into the promised land and, and God said, you know, destroy all this in Jericho. And one of the people didn't destroy some of the stuff that they had found in Jericho. And what happened when they went to the next battle? Uh, things didn't happen smoothly the way that they should have. They got defeated. Why? Because they didn't follow God's direction. And when you don't follow direction, what happens? You get lost and things are not the way they're supposed to be. You end up in the wrong location, the wrong place. So it's really good to follow direction because you don't want to be lost. You want to get to your, your, your destination on time. You know, you don't want to be going around the mountain over and over and over again because of fear, because you don't have faith in what God is doing in your life. You want to get to your direction, so uh, your destination. So, like I said, as God tells you what you need to do in your life, you just do as directed. You know, even if it looks crazy and, you know, wild, like leave college, go to California, buy a one-way ticket. And you have no clue why, you know, you just do as you're directed, uh, you know, go look for a place, even though you have a six month lease and you can't get out of it, 
and you end up getting out of it. Just do as directed. Um, God will, you know, you'll get to your destination as God uh, had originally told you. So I'm going to put up the next few questions and then we're going to carry on. Alrighty. Are you doing as God has directed you to get you to your next destination? What steps have you taken? Alrighty, you guys. So this is the last bit. Um, so here we're going to kind of look at Hosea and how God told Hosea to marry a prostitute. Clear as day. These were God's directions. So like, even if God's directions for your life seem crazy, they are still clear as day. And you're to do what God has called you to do. And for Hosea, God told Hosea to get married. Now, some people would say, okay, well, <clears throat> this is, you know, nice. Okay, Hosea's going to get married. But not only that, he told Hosea, Claire, say to get married. But his wife was a harlot. So he was telling Hosea, hey, Hosea, I want you to get married. And also, by the way, your wife is a harlot. Um, and, and that's who I want you to take as your wife. And like I said, even though God's directions may seem crazy sometimes, they are clear as day. Um, they, but are you willing to believe God and trust God for what it is that he's telling you to do for your personal life? Um, and so we'll look. In Hosea uh, chapter 1, verse 2, when the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, clear as day, go take yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness. Because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. And so, that's what he did. Hosea got married. Those were his instructions, clear as day. Go get married to a harlot. So, he married Gomar, the daughter of Diblin and she conceived and bore him a son. Now you're like, what in the world? Here's this man and God tells him, okay, go marry a prostitute. I, I want you to do this. Those are instructions. Get married. Not only that, get married to an adulterous woman, a prostitute. Go ahead. Get married to her. Go go do that. I'm instructing you. That's, that's what I want you to do. I don't want you to do anything else. I'm not asking you to go down the street and go marry Miss Susie, who got her five-year plan going on, her, you know, her degree going on, who, you know, is in the church every Sunday, who is loving the Lord, who is happy and healthy and, and and doing everything that society says is right. No, God said, hey, I want you to go marry a prostitute. Are you sure those are the right directions, though? Are you sure that that's what I'm hearing, though? He didn't even question God. He didn't, he didn't question God, though. He did exactly what it was that God had called him to do. It says, so he took Gomar as his wife. He married her, and he had children with her as well. Now, he had to go through some things in the process because, you know, he gets mad because, you know, Gomar goes out and she starts, you know, 
uh, prostituting, you know, and, and doing all these things, and uh, he ends up having to buy her back as a slave and take her back again after she's done hurt him and caused him all this damage, but he did what it was that God has called him to do. Now, we may have to go through some things, you know, God's directions may be clear as day, but they are not always going to be easy. They're not always going to be the way society says they're supposed to be. You know, we think about people like Naaman. In the Bible, Naaman had leprosy. He went to Elisha. Elisha said, you know, you know, what do I do? He was telling him, what do I do to get rid of the leprosy? And Elisha told him, go into the Jordan River and, you know, dip in the, seven, dip in the river seven times. Dip in the river seven times, you know. He wasn't even going to do it. And because he wasn't going to do it, he almost didn't receive his blessing. He almost didn't get his healing because he wasn't going to do what it was that was directed to him. But it was something so simple, something in which God was directing him to do. And when he did it, then his leprosy went away. But, you know, we have to, you know, even if it sounds strange, even if, you know, you don't think that, uh, you're hearing God correctly, it, it doesn't matter, you know, like, when I first heard, okay, Jazz, I want you to leave college, excuse me, uh, I want you to follow me, but, uh, Lord, I am following you, um, you know, I go to church on Sundays, I'm in Bible study every day, except for Saturdays, you know, I'm in college, I have a five-year plan, I have furniture for a place for when I leave college, um, I want to go get my master's degree. You know, I had it all planned out. I had it all together. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what it was, you know, that society told me, you know, I'm successful because I have these things. And God says, no, I'm directing you and you need to listen to what I'm directing you to. And so I sold all my stuff as God had asked of me and required me to do. And I got up and I left college and I followed Jesus. And though I looked crazy and though, you know, I look back and say, what in the world sometimes, I know that I was not confused. I know that God's directions towards me were clear as day. And you can't, you know, I confirmed it over and over again because, you know, it wasn't what society says is the norm for people in you know today's day and age but point blank period at the end of the day like for Hosea hey Hosea go take you an adulterous woman it didn't seem you know something what what God <laughs> am I hearing correctly go take me a prostitute as a wife you know it didn't seem that simple you know, it didn't seem normal to society. It wasn't, oh, go take you a little church girl who got it all together and you guys are going to go and you guys are going to preach together my word. No, it was go take you a harlot wife. And that's the directions he had to follow. And though sometimes the directions don't seem normal to society and seem so strange, if God asks you to uh, do some type of a direction, then you follow that direction. Uh, you know, God knows what it is that he has for your life. He knows how you're going to get your healing. He knows, uh, where he wants to bring you in your life. You know, uh, if I, if, if I didn't listen to God, like, I can only imagine where I would be, you know, like, I don't want to go around in circles my whole life. I got my healing, you know, I've been struggling my whole life with tons of traumas. I mean, I haven't even took medication in about five years in which I'm supposed to take, and my body is still functioning normally. You know, I got my healing in which it is that God had, you know, for my mental traumas. I mean, I still struggle with some things in my life, and, you know, everybody does, you know, but uh, from, you know, struggling with, you know, different anxieties and, um, dealing with abandonment issues and, and things like that, you know, uh, God has really been, um, 
a blessing to me, you know, during this whole process from helping me, you know, sending my brother's girlfriend to help me get my license when, you know, my family members weren't uh, doing the things in which I needed them to do to help me to make those steps, which, you know, you would think they would do, you know. So, you know, God, you know, God knows what you need, you know, he knows who you need and, and how he's going to get you to A to B, you know, even if it's hard, you know, I know, like, I look at, like, the, the guy who helped me, uh, you know, want to get off the streets before I actually got off the streets. I mean, he wasn't saved, you know, but he had time for me. He didn't have a job, but he had time for me, you know, and, and if he never came into my life and maybe if he would have been working and would have been everything that everybody required him to be in my life, I would never be here because the time that he had for me, you know, made me realize that people do love people, you know, and that they require time and love and effort. And, you know, and he was willing to put in that time and that love and effort for someone who didn't have love for herself who he watched disrespect herself, who he watched cut herself, you know, and because of that, you know, I did want to make the effort to change my life, you know, so you never know how the instruction which God gives you could impact someone's life, or, you know, like I remember being in, in California and just eating with a homeless man, who knows, you know, who ate with him, or who sat down and had a dinner with him last, you know, or talking to a girl who God would not allow her to get into college and she was going to do missionary work. And I told her, oh, God had me leave college. Who knows where her life is now? Who knew, knows whose lives she's been changing just because of that one conversation? Because conversations and little dinners and just being in the right place at the right time can just change someone's life. You never know uh, how following these instructions can benefit someone else's lives, you know, and we always think that, you know, this is just about us, but it's bigger than just us, you know, God has a perfect plan, he has the directions which he wants us to follow, you know, if we follow them, then we can be, you know, there for that person, you know, who knows, you know, uh, I remember one night I was in a hotel and there were like bed bugs in the hotel and before I could even lay down I went to the office and I was telling this guy about my past and the things in my life and he was about to sleep with this prostitute and I told her I said you know she's like do you smoke drink do you want to hang out and I was like no I don't do any of that I said but baby I've been where you are I said you need to go home and do something with your life and she left I don't know how it impacted her life I don't know where she is right now but little conversations you look all throughout the Bible and, and God just, you know, Jesus says, you know, little things to different people and it just, you know, go, your faith has made you well or, or, you know, just has these like little words for them just, you know, and it impacts their lives and impacts their lives. You know, you don't know how these little directions just to be here or, or be in this place or, or do this thing can, and can change someone's life. Um, in any type of way, just because you're listening to what it was that God told you to do as directed. And, and though it may seem crazy, uh, you know, it's clear as day and, um, you know, God, God got you and, uh, it, it may not be the five year plan in which, <laughs> in which the world or society tells you to plan, but it, it will get you, it, it will get you to a destination. Um, and, a, you know, you will arrive, you know, look at, um, Rebecca, Rebecca became a wife and, and she had her sons and, and she got to her destination. You know, sometimes it's not going to be, you know, doing the things in which, you know, I've had to do, but I mean, sometimes it's, you know, to bring you to a place where maybe you get a family or maybe you get your education, you know, maybe it's not leaving college, maybe it's going towards, you know, your education, maybe it's towards, you know, buying your own house or starting your own business, whatever it is, God's going to make it clear as day for you to get to your destination for your personal life and where it is that you're heading. So I thank you guys so much for tuning in and I am going to put up the last few questions and I love you guys so much until we meet again. Peace. Do you know clear as day where God is taking you to? Are you ready to arrive to your destination?